Hi guys, this video is going to cover energy transfer, exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions and we'll finish with a summary. In a chemical change, the particles that make up the reactant are broken up and rearranged in order to form the products. As a result of the chemical change, the reactants and products of a reaction will store different amounts of energy to each other. We can think about two different situations. In the first case, the product stores more energy than the reactants. The additional energy that's present in the products that was not present in the reactants therefore must have been taken in from the surroundings. We can illustrate this example on this diagram here, where the reactants have less energy than the products. But this energy, in order to transform the reactants into the products, must have come from somewhere, and this is from the surroundings. The surroundings just means the space around the reaction that is taking place. And for a small reaction, it's likely to be the test tube or the air around it. However, for a big reaction, it could be a forest, as we've used to represent the surroundings here. The other possibility is that the product stores less energy than the reactants. And in this case, this extra energy is released back into the surroundings. The reactants form the products and the products release energy. In chemical reactions, this energy that we're talking about, which is taken in or released, is usually in the form of heat, meaning that we either cool down or heat up the surroundings. An important thing to remember is that energy transfer will accompany every chemical reaction. We're now going to look at each of the two examples in a bit more detail. Firstly, we can think about exothermic reactions. The word exothermic is just used to describe a reaction where the products store less energy than the reactants. As we've seen before, if the products have less energy than the reactants, then as the reaction happens, some of this additional energy will be released. This ensures that the amount of energy is conserved between the left-hand side of this reaction arrow and the right-hand side. This energy is therefore released into the surroundings, and in an exothermic reaction, the energy is released into the surroundings in the form of heat. Releasing heat energy into the surroundings has the effect of heating them up, and we can see this by an increase in the temperature of the surroundings of the reaction. Heat is released by the reaction, and the temperature of the surroundings of the reaction that is taking place will heat up. A lot of chemical reactions are exothermic reactions. An obvious example is any type of combustion reaction. The exothermic nature of combustion reactions is why we burn coal to get heat, for example. Another less obvious example of an exothermic reaction is a neutralisation reaction between an acid and an alkali. The sort of temperature increase that you see in this reaction is no way near as significant as that of a combustion reaction. But if you did measure the temperature of the reactants before the reaction and afterwards, you would see that there had been an increase. As heat is released into the mixture and the glassware and the surrounding air. The other type of reaction is known as an endothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction describes a reaction where the product stores more energy than the reactants. This means that the reactants need to take in energy in order to form the products. And in an endothermic reaction, this energy is taken in from the surroundings in the form of heat. If heat is taken away, this is the same as a cooling effect. And endothermic reactions will lead to a temperature decrease of the surroundings. The reactants will take in heat in order for the reaction to happen, which will decrease the amount of heat available in the surroundings and cause the temperature to go down. Endothermic reactions aren't as common as exothermic reactions, but there are some examples. One is the reaction between ammonium nitrate and water. The fact that this is an endothermic reaction that leads to cooling of the surroundings is used in making of some ice packs. Snapping the ice pack causes the reaction to start, which reduces the temperature of the ice pack without needing to put it into the freezer. Another example of an endothermic reaction is the reaction between citric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate. And this is the reaction that takes place in a sherbet sweet, which makes it fizz. This endothermic reaction also takes in heat from your tongue in order for it to happen, which is why sucking a sherbet sweet can sometimes leave your mouth feeling cold, as heat has been removed from the surroundings of the reaction. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCC chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.